Hi there folks. Over the past few weeks in our church services we've been looking at the theme of exile, that point in the Old Testament where the people of God were taken off as slaves to Babylon. And we've been looking at the lessons that we can learn from that period for our lives today where we're away from our normal routines, we can't gather together in our churches like the people back then being taken away from the temple. And although it's very different we've been looking at just what lessons we can learn about their faithfulness and the way that God spoke to them through that time. Now for a lot of us we're getting a bit excited about the the hope of coming out of lockdown as we wait to hear more about going into the next phases and when we'll be able to gather together in our churches again and we start planning for those things. And so I wanted to look a little bit today very quickly at the stories of when they come back out of exile and back to Jerusalem. But to do that I want to start by jumping way back to the book of Exodus where the people are travelling following Moses after coming out of Egypt. And in that time they built the tabernacle, the tent, where they did all their sacrifices, where they met with God, where Moses talked with God and where God's presence dwelled with them. When they dedicated the tabernacle, it tells us in Exodus 40 that God's presence filled that place with a cloud and with fire. It was quite an awesome sight. If you jump on then through the next period of the history of the people of God in the Old Testament, eventually you come to the book of First Kings and by that point they've established themselves as a nation, God has brought them into the land and they have kings and King Solomon is in charge and he's given the job of building a temple in Jerusalem for God, the place where God is going to dwell rather than the tent, the tabernacle. And when the temple is finished and completed, we're told in 1 Kings chapter 8 that the presence of God falls on the temple as a cloud and the priests all have to leave because the presence of God is filling that place. Again, it's this awesome spectacle of God genuinely dwelling with his people. So when they come to that point of coming back from exile in Babylon, in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah, we read of the rebuilding of the walls and the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem. In Ezra chapter 6, we then come to the dedication of the new temple. And the people would have known the stories of what happened before when the tabernacle and the first temple were dedicated, of how God's presence came in a cloud and in fire. And they offer the sacrifices and the Levites do their jobs and they go through all of the ceremonies and they dedicate the new temple to God. And nothing happens. It seems as they come out of exile that God has a new plan for how he is going to work with his people. Because the next major thing that happens going through the history of the Bible just a few hundred years later is the coming of Jesus. It seems that when they return from exile into this new phase of, of history, God has a new way that he's going to interact with his people, a new way that he is going to reach out to them and draw them to him. And, you know, it's got me thinking as we look at coming out of lockdown and coming back into our churches. I wonder what God might have in store for us that could be new in this season. And I wonder, are we going to try and go back to the way things were before and just try and slip back into doing things the way we've always done them? And if we do that and we get all of our things running the way that they used to. I wonder, like the people in the time of Ezra coming to that point of dedication, if it might be something of an anticlimax. Because actually God has something new that he wants to do in this season. As we look to this new normal, whatever it's going to look like as we come out of lockdown, what new things, what better plans might God have in place for us? Now, if we're going to do that, it's going to require us to be prayerful, to be seeking God, to be looking for his vision, seeing where it is that he's leading us in this time. It's also going to require us to be quite radical and take some risks in trying new things and embracing changes to the way that we do things. And it might also require us to be self-sacrificial, being willing to lay down things that we've done in the past, even if they mean a great deal to us, because we believe that God has something new for us to do in this season, a new way of working with us. And I really am excited to look at the potential that if we can do those things, if we can be prayerful and embrace changes, and be self-sacrificial, then what new things might God have in store for us as his people in Scotland and in our churches around the world today? <laughs>